Hey folks, Chris here with the Technical Fisherman. We're coming to you today with some fall fishing on the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, this time of year, it's the middle of November, this time of year is when we start looking for uh, the big migratory fish that are coming in out of the ocean uh, from a couple of different directions here in the middle and upper bay. We get a body of fish that comes up uh, through the bay out of Virginia, and then we get another body of fish that comes down through the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal. We've been anxiously awaiting these fish, and they're not here yet. Um, there's sporadic reports from the trolling fleet of catching some big fish, you know, 40 to 50 pound range fish, but they're very spread out. It's not really a predictable bite yet. Uh, so the uh, the light tackle bite, which is what we've been looking for, uh, has been tough to come by, frankly. Most of the fleet right now is running way south towards Solomon's. Uh, I didn't feel like putting that many miles under the boat today, so uh, I took a chance, headed back into the upper bay, some of the, some of the lumps and the ledges that I like to fish really throughout the year. Oh, a little better fish, a little better. Tell you what, it's kind of working through this, all these smaller fish. Uh, you gotta be patient, this will pay off. Now, look, in the fall, this is by no means a trophy, but fish have been tough to come by. Lately. So anytime I'm getting up into the keeper range makes me happy. We didn't find any of the big migratory fish that we're looking for this time of year and I'm figuring or hoping at least that it's going to be another week or two before they're here. What I did find was a mix of fish everywhere from you know tiny little dinky fish up into you know the low to mid 20s. Nothing in terms of the upper 20s or certainly 30 plus inch fish. Again that we like to see this time of year but so as far as I'm concerned anytime I can get out target at least decent fish and get a bend in the rod I'm all about it. So don't give up on the idea that there's still some resident fish around uh, and in terms of those migratory fish they're going to be here any day so my attitude is I keep going out hoping I'm going to be at the front end of when those fish come through. There he is. That's a better fish. Under these jinks. Stuck to the bottom. Again, this is not a fall trophy, but <laughs> compared with what's been around lately, I'll take it. Today, really, the game was the fish were spread out over maybe a mile or so in the particular area that I was working. And there were pods of birds that were crashing on these very small fish that were chasing small bait on the surface. And those were just in particular areas, but within this entire large area there was a big body of fish. And there were better fish stuck to the bottom that were feeding either on different bait or feeding on some of the stuff that was falling down from the blitz on top. That's kind of a classic situation when it plays out like that. This was not a situation where you wanted to run and gun and chase those birds on top. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tackle that I like to use in the fall. It's always important to have a selection of rods, and I am um, a big believer in having multiple rods rigged with different, uh, different baits, different rigs, and ready to go at any time. But in the fall, uh, it's more important than ever to do that. What I like to use in the fall typically is a three or four rod combo at least um, that allows me to fish both soft plastics and metals in various sizes. So I've got two rods uh, that I'm, are my primary soft plastic jigging rods today. The first, I'm using a six inch Bass Assassin. This is on a lighter rod, um, and this is sort of a combination rod. First, it's for prospecting. If I'm not sure there are bigger fish in the mix and I just wanna see what's down there, I start out with this smaller soft plastic. If there's a smaller class of fish there that might not be responding to a big 10 inch uh, uh, soft plastic, this one will do better. Also, if I realize that I'm just not going to be finding the bigger fish at all in a particular area, I'll go back to this, scale it down a little bit, and still be able to catch a fun class of fish. Um, it's blowing out here today, so I've got three-quarter ounce and one-ounce jig heads that I'm using, uh, and that's the small rod. Now, to the extent that uh, there are bigger fish in the mix, once I've located bigger fish, or if I want to just focus on trying to catch only the biggest fish that are out there, I've got my heavier rod set up. This is a medium-heavy setup, and I've got a 10-inch 
uh, BKD or Bass Candy Delight on it uh, on a heavy two ounce jig head. Um, when we get into these bigger migratory fish, this is going to be the only rod that I'm going to be pulling. I always have it on the boat and always have it rigged and ready at this time of year. I actually missed a couple on this today, whether that was smaller fish just on the tail or whether there were some bigger fish mixed in. Uh, we'll never know because I screwed up and didn't catch them. But, so that's the second soft plastic rod. The other thing that I always like to have this time of year is some metal rigged up. Um, and uh, metal's useful in a couple of ways. First of all, the wind blows in the fall and there's times that getting these soft plastics down into the zone where the fish are can just be hard. So uh, I like to use metal in those situations. It gets down deep. This is a uh, little jimmy, little bunker jig uh, that I've just started using in the last couple years and I love these things. They've got a great profile. They look like a uh, peanut bunker. They sink very well. The fish seem to respond very well to them. The other thing that I like to do when I'm fishing metal is attach a teaser to it. You know, I grew up up in the northeast and Teasers are huge up in that area. Surf fishermen use them, jiggers use them up there. So what I'll do is attach one or two feet of uh, leader material, you know, 30 pound or 20 pound leader material, and I like to tie it right into the eye of the hook. At the end of that, I tie in this little bucktail teaser. It essentially looks like a, just a deceiver fly, basically. Um, and that does a couple of things. First of all, it gives you two different bait profiles for the fish to focus on. So you've got this kind of peanut bunker looking uh, profile, but then you've also got something that looks more like a spearing uh, or a bay anchovy. So depending on what the fish are keying on, they have a couple of different options. There's also a theory that using these two um, lures in tandem creates kind of a predator-prey thing that looks like um, you know there's activity going on within your rig that fish might focus on. I don't know if that's the case or not. I've heard it. Uh, what I do know is that these things can be very effective. One thing you have to be aware of, though, is when you're using metal, and particularly when you're using these small teaser rigs, when there's still a lot of small fish around, you may end up catching a lot of those smaller fish because particularly this little you know, uh, this little spearing looking um, teaser, uh, the small fish are going to be all over this thing. But, so over the next two to three weeks, the focus here in the middle and upper bay is going to be where those migratory fish are uh, and, uh, you know, which direction they're coming from and getting out after them. I'm hoping to be able to put together a few episodes where we get out after those bigger fish uh, before we get into the wintertime fishing when it's a different kind of game that we're going to be looking at. So until then, get out there, get after them, and I'll see you next time.